Um, well, since uh, the recording is on, um, I think um, I'm not sure if Yabi, Yabi wanted to take over because I can see Rahel is already in. Uh, she will be the one um, leading us through this tutorial. Rahel, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm also fine. Um, so I'm not sure if Yabi wanted to maybe say something. Yabi? No, I mean, I think it's good. Great. You take a lead, uh, Desmond. Uh, Ryan will give us tutorial on Slack, um, Spark. So, yeah. Okay. So thank you, everyone. Um, I, I'd wish by the end of uh, this uh, uh, session, we are able to use Spark and um, yeah keep engaging in the chat box and also at the end of it you can also ask your questions so i want to take this time to welcome rahel to uh, lead us through this session so welcome rahel thanks desma so um hi everyone my name is rahel and i'm gonna do a little tutorial on uh, on spark so yeah i'm gonna share my screen now I hope you can see my screen, right? Yeah, we can see your screen. Yeah, okay. Uh, so. Okay, so I'm gonna start uh, with the introduction to Spark. So the outline. Um, so I am Rahil. I am a mail engineer at Adlojo. I usually work on optimizing machine learning algorithms using big data to um, do machine learning uh, problems. Um, so so back to spark so uh the motivation um many important applications must process like large data and uh, data streaming is uh, popular so we need a uh, we need a, a setup that that uh <coughs> that helps in big data manipulations so it could be it could either be in social networks website statistics or nlp or in machine learning, any machine learning algorithms, uh, any data transformations that require big data. Um, so yeah, for this uh, systems, they require large clusters uh, so that they could handle the big data workloads. Um, so why distributed computing? So uh, first, let me just... Uh, let me get back and ask if anyone is has is familiar with PySpark or Spark or like big data. Anyone? So uh, yeah, I'll take it as a no. And let me get back. Okay, so um, um, so as I mentioned, Spark is enables distributed computing, which means uh, it uses a dividing conquer mechanism, which is when there is a data to be created or transformed, then it will be um, it will be processed in in distributed and uh, either parallel computers. So um, so the problem is single machine cannot compute the workload. So it requires a parallel distribution, distributed network so that uh, the big data could be transformed or manipulated. So um, Spark is one tool that's used to do this. And um, uh, Spark is originally written in Scala so uh, but i'm going to be focusing on PySpark because we as data scientists or machine learning engineers uh use most of our time uh we spend it on 
Python programming. So, so PySpark is like a library that enables us to use uh, Spark using Python. So um, next step is uh, Spark architecture. So uh, there are different architectures in uh, Spark. So mainly it's uh, there's a driver program and there are, there are executors. And there is in between a cluster manager that uh, that that manages how work will be distributed through different uh, executor uh, nodes. So um, next, so there is the Spark driver. So so it consists all the basic functionalities. Uh, it uh, it handles such as uh, DAG scheduling, task schedulers, backend sch schedulers, or like task uh, distributions uh, and uh, yeah clusters they they manage the uh, they manage the uh, uh, cluster of machines that will run spark applications so um this have master and workers so master being the the main distributor and workers are the individual uh, executors of um, um of this uh, distributed network so um so uh, reference we have this uh reference on Passpark, so I'm gonna share it. So this is like a really good uh, uh, site that, that is used for programming Spark. So um, so Spark as, as Python or any other language has its own syntax. Uh, also there is another uh, one where we could use pandas so, so Spark like Pandas um, implementation, but while using PySpark, I mean like a Pandas library for PySpark, but uh, this PySpark, um, I, I could say language is uh, what's uh, what's mainly designed for Spark on 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 Python. So uh, just use this site for for the syntax and. Uh, to learn about more about Spark architectures here, so um, so next I'm just gonna jump to the demo, and uh, uh, so this is like from the demo. This is um, to using pandas and PySpark data frame. So uh, when we say PySpark, we could also uh, see it as a data frame, for example. So you know, like pandas data frame. So there are transformations in Pandas, and there are also transformations in Spark. The difference is that in PySpark, the PySpark data frame itself is a, a partitioned or a distributed, and any transformation made is in a distributed manner. So we could see from a simple uh, a group by example that uh, this is the PySpark uh, runtime. So the, as a file of as a data size increases, there is this um, slight increase in runtime, but then using pandas, um, so there there is a really greater increase in runtime, and then at some point we get out of uh, memory issues. And I will, I will explain it why we have this uh, later, but for now, if you have any questions, I could um, I take some questions. So like anything that is unclear or anything that um, that you want me to repeat, starting from like the basics, so. Any question? So Desmond. Don't you have someone to like recommend for questions? Um, do, do we have maybe anyone with a question? Okay, nice. Daisy. Okay, so let's just move back to um, the demo, if no questions. But if there are questions, just let me know. 
Um, so I'm just going to do a PySpark demo. So what are the like first the steps on implementing Spark? So the first thing is like um, setting up the environment, installing PySpark, and then there is creating connection creating spark connection so that we could use uh, the spark api uh, the PySpark api so um and then there is maybe we could do a i could say data data fetching with spark and then we could uh, transform the data and load the data somewhere we want so um so I have also been looking at the, at this one, uh, the challenge. So I think it's in task four that is required to use a Spark. So um, yeah, maybe we will go back there. But first, yeah, first what we need to do is we need to import the libraries uh, used for PySpark. So uh, implementing PySpark which is a Spark in, in Python is similar to just implementing any manipulation or any transformations using pandas, except we will use different syntax, we will use different libraries, and also we will, um, and also it's a distributed uh, computing. And it's much faster, it's, um, it, take, it takes less uh, memory. And uh, yeah, that's, uh, and also it's 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 richer in terms of like loading data like or in terms of uh, reading data especially for so for reading right uh, operations it's it's uh, so much better than pandas or any transformations so uh first thing we do is let me maybe restart like right now. Also, one thing I forgot to mention is that it has its own UI, so we could uh, like see track the the progress, uh, memory usage, the also um, um, the time it used to do a task. So I'm just importing libraries um, and creating Spark connection. So here, uh, what I'm trying to do is just. As I said earlier, there are driver memory, there's executor memories, and then uh, executors and drivers, so that I'm trying to assign memory to them. And I want uh, my port to be hosted in like this uh, local host port, in this port. And uh, this is also my my cluster. And so I'm using Yarn, Yarn cluster. So if you're using a local cluster, you could uh, make this uh, local so that it runs locally. And if you go to localhost in this port, then you could find the, um, the Spark um, UI. And uh, other things are like, yeah, so any configurations we need to pass, we could uh, use it before creating the connection or even after creating the connection, we could uh, update the, the connection. So, we need to create Spark session uh, with these configurations. And uh, yeah, so this is just a simple function to do that. So I'm trying to create this Spark connection. I'm just calling the, the, the function and I call it Spark then. Yeah, so I asked it to run it on this port, but it is already, uh, in use, so it's running on the Spark, the, the, the Spark UI, and that the, the yeah. So I could uh, run this. So it might take a little time while uh, building the session. Yeah, so, um, so yeah, I have created my session um, with master connection in the app. So this uh, get config it all just shows the configurations of Spark. So uh, where like, 
what we use like course maximum number of course num i mean maximum number of worker uh executor course how many we have and um the ports what cluster we use all that will be uh, displayed in this information if you uh, do this so so data fetching so i have the data frame and um so the data frame i will just like what we do with pandas i'll just try to read it but using uh, PySpark. so yeah it's just a syntax that we only load that we load the data frame uh, and also the good thing about it is like let's say for example if we have in this directory if we have like multiple files or like inside it maybe there's another directory and with multiple files then <clears throat> we just need to specify that file type format which in this case is parquet or it could be csv and then it fetches or it reads all the files that are inside the directory so we don't need to write any loop or we don't need to like go and find anything i mean the parquet files or csv files that we want so we could only just give it the directory name the directory name or we could just do like everything in the directory maybe there is another directory directory inside it and then we could also use like let's say file one or something if we have file one.csv then we could just um, for all the directories inside this directory if there are like file one.csv files then it reads them so it makes it easier to read multiple um, data from like multiple sources so um, yeah, so I'm just trying to read everything that's inside this directory. And yeah. Yeah, so as you can see, it did not take much time. But if it was in Pandas, then I would, uh, my kernel would break because it would go out of memory. So it's a big data, which is in like millions of rows of data. So um, so I could just read it with Spark in like five seconds, right? Mm, so I can see, so there is a syntax difference, as you can see, uh, compared to Pandas. So for that is why I, I, I highly recommend this site, uh, Spark by examples. So especially for PySpark and using, uh, could be for Scala or any others, it has a really good um, syntax or like, the codes for any implementation in PySpark. So um, I just read it now, and then next thing I want to do is maybe, um, yeah, maybe I could um, profile. So uh, they've got profile. So we can imagine how much time it would it could have taken for uh, pandas data frame to group uh, uh, a data frame, or it could like we could run out of memory for like uh, data with uh, billions. I mean millions of rows, all billions of rows. So um, I'm just trying to group it by maybe two columns. I could say I could see here. Uh, in some okay I could use maybe click so um so I've grouped the data so you could see that it, it just didn't take any time right it's, it's like grouping I mean um, so you could you would be surprised to see like how this group by uh, group by uh, function just did not take any time for for a data which is really big. Uh, so the reason is because uh, Spark does uh, lazy computation. So which means that when I say group by, it doesn't actually get the data and then group by them and then get the result. What it, it's doing is just uh, it's just uh, understanding that there is a group by a group by um, instruction, 
so and then that it needs to sum the click that's what it is doing here so so it only takes uh, time when i want to collect the data so collecting the data means i am trying to um i'm trying to get the actual data not like telling an, inst an instruction to group it so let's say group by so if we say like show which means we want to see the data that is grouped, then it would take some time for it to show because uh, it has not uh, it has not actively computed the um, the group by uh, function. So, but it's still so much faster than pandas, right? So, um, so yeah, this is uh, so. Maybe I want to load it to a pause which is uh, found in S3, so I could um, use this. And then, yeah, just, uh, so I have transformed it, like group by function. And then I, I will try to repartition it into any number of partition I want, which means like it will uh, store it in a certain directory, but like it, it will have different partitions or in different files. So I gave it like two. So if we have like a really big data in one in one file, and then we want it to be uh, like partitioned into different, we could just load it, repartition it, and save it somewhere else so that it's easier for for other time to like to fetch the data. We could also like partition it by any column we want. So partitioning in this case means like uh, so. Um, data falling into similar country or a partition will be uh, in, a, in a similar file or folder. So, um, yeah, I'm just partitioning it and then um, loading it to a pass. Oh, okay. Um, Okay, so I could. Uh, uh, so that I have sold there. Or maybe I could. Okay, maybe I should. Uh, so what it is doing is just uh, repartitioning it into two portions and then writing it into <coughs> a, a parquet file. Which is found in this path. Yeah, or we could go here and then try to, or I could like change the path.
Yeah, so it has written it here, uh, group by transformed. Yeah, so as you could see, it is partitioned by country. So, um, yeah, the data that is finally uh, loaded will look like uh, this. Yeah, so we can like try to see Angola and then <clears throat> there is a partition file file that is uh, that contains the data for uh, Angola. So, yeah, so that's uh, a simple example of uh, Spark transformation and how fast it could be and also like how we could uh, how we could read write and uh, transform it. So also like there is a support for like text files and I have uh, downloaded the file that is um, that's, that was given as a sample and we could just do the same thing, just, uh, read uh, text files using Spark. So, um, so similarly, it's, it's really fast and uh, we could like still, for example, for the task, because I am not sure maybe if I have not if I have read it really uh, clearly but so you are supposed to do transformations but it's not like what kind of transformations you will do is probably up to you so we could uh, try to do like try to um, to repartition it which means it's like in really uh, uh, many data like it's um, in many partitions, so you could just uh, transform it to be in, in, in small partitions, for example. So I think this is the text that was uh, given as a sample, so which is like, which has this many uh, files inside it. But if you could um, just transform it to be like 10 files, so that it's less uh, distributed, then you could, uh, we could do this implementation. And uh, and that text transformed. Yeah, so in, I think, uh, 10 partitions. So if you have any question. Oh, so what's a parquet file? Uh, it's just a file type or file format similar to a CSV, but it's less, uh, it's a condensed. So it, it's, it's usually uh, used for big data because it's, uh, it's, uh, it's really com compressed. So, yeah. So what kind of data transformation? So uh, in Spark, you could do transformations like simple transformations that you could, you know, do in, uh, in Pandas. You could do machine learning. There is a Spark ML library to do that. Uh, so any transformation, um, you could do NLP, there is Spark NLP. Uh, you could do model training, you could do, uh, yeah, you could, um, uh, so anything that is machine learning or any data transformation uh, is uh, can be done using the uh, Spark or using Spark. Okay. Yeah. So maybe that this one. Okay. Okay, uh, th th thank you, Rahel, for your <clears throat> brief and precise uh, code description. Uh, it is a very nice presentation, but what I have as a question is, uh, on our Spark module for this task, mm -hmm. we will going to load some of the video, audio data with this transcription, and uh, we will uh, compare uh, 
the correct transcription and the new one together and we will validate it and store it to uh, the storage the bucket so <coughs> this so, sorry uh, i did not hear it straight so you will be doing okay uh, we, we will do some, you will try to extract the data and then uh, then we will uh, process mm -hmm. uh, for example if we take uh, some of the audio data mm -hmm. which is uh, not not processed before uh, i mean the process text audio uh, <coughs> publisher may give uh, to this module the mm -hmm. spark module for this task first we will take from front end some of uh, audio and the transcription and we will okay. reprocess that one and uh, we will clean it out and we will put to spark mm -hmm. then when the new subscriber i mean when the new information is come in we we will check uh, that information with what we have as a uh, as a as a data inside mm -hmm. the spark yeah so okay. is it a possibility to use uh, some scripts of uh, python uh, in spark code as you have said it it used different uh, it is different language yeah i mean uh, declaration and the sound things may be different on spark is it yeah. possible to integrate with python there? Uh, yes it is there is this uh, spark i'm trying to this python uh, um but let me just try okay yes. let me let me clear for you uh, maybe i may have the scripts of python which may clean okay. my audio data then mm -hmm. is it possible to import that script is on the spark code and uh, use it sure, for there is pre-processing yeah there is this api let me share it here so if i get it right you're trying to uh to implement a pandas or a python uh just like you do in pandas um transformations but still in PySpark right while still the data being in PySpark so there is this uh library that you import in PySpark pandas and uh, what it does is it it uses um it uses like it's uh the syntax is as as pandas but then you are but you're like actually writing PySpark it creates uh it creates session for you and then it uh, it will it in the background it will run PySpark, but then you are writing a pandas uh, transformation yeah but i would not recommend that because because uh for like big data processing uh if you're like searching for a job or when you're looking for a job you will require a a, a PySpark um, skill so I would highly recommend to like go to the um, um, to the link I shared, which has like really good and, and a very simple PySpark uh, um, syntax and um, and code. So you could just uh, read it from there. Yeah, there's also uh, like loading data uh, or streaming data from Kafka, which I think you are required to do. So uh, you could just check that out and uh, yeah i hope that answers your question yeah yeah absolutely uh, but yeah. one additional maybe mm -hmm. uh, have you worked on the speech things using the spark before uh no i have not worked on that okay thank you. so i'm just assuming that the uh like you have already uh done the kafka part so the reading reading or streaming from kafka would uh would, would be your task right so so i'm assuming that like from there then i'm just trying to uh to like show you how you could transform the data that you uh streamed using kafka all right thank you yeah mm, yeah Pavel, i think you raised your hand I 
think is that right? So, other questions? So, Uh, yeah. it looks like we don't have a question or maybe daisy do you have a question oh i just wanted to point out that martin had asked a question in the chat um mm -hmm. how do you add the component of periodic tasks uh how do you add components of periodic tasks so you mean uh okay so you need to run a scheduler so as i have so in the slide you've seen that there are the Spark executor manage the uh, the schedulers or tasks that are scheduled. So for that, I would say I think you would require a scheduler. So the the Py Spark is the code that's going to be running in the background, right? But you need a scheduler that like periodically uh, schedules this task or this data um, streaming. And when it's when you are but when you're using PySpark, then you will be processing it really fast. I mean big data could be processed. So it's not a Spark library that's going going to do the periodic uh, streaming, but you will be required to set up a different uh, scheduler. Spark scheduler for that. Maybe like using CronJob or uh, using Airflow if you have uh, taking taken like. Uh, a training on that yeah so has it answered the question martin yeah okay okay <clears throat> Um, so, any other question? If not, maybe can I ask? Yeah, I think you can go ahead and ask a question. Yeah, just a simple question, like uh, to understand if uh, anyone has been following. So, uh, I just want to ask why Spark data frame is faster than Pandas data frame, or why Spark transformations are faster? than uh, vice versa, transp I mean, than pandas transformations. Yeah, this. Uh, we've said it's a distributed data processing engine. So mm -hmm. it kind of uses the divide and conquer mechanism, which allows mm -hmm. for it to be faster than pandas. Yeah. Yeah. And and someone can add someone else can add on that yeah yeah, okay. yeah so just the, the main thing is it's distributed so we we can compute in parallel manner also the other thing is that it's it's just the main thing that's spark yeah it runs on the yeah you know it's a lazy execution nature. So, so when you're uh, trying to write transformations or instructions, you will the, the machine will not actually get data or will not execute it actively. But what it does is it just writes the instruction on it just understands instructions. And then when you later try to collect the data, try to collect the transformed results, then you will have to then it will like require the machine um the parallel transformations or anything that requires memory or time is when you're trying to collect results not when you are trying to give it in, in instructions so that's also one thing that has made it really really fast so this means like say for example if you say uh, a result is column a plus column b 
then it does not compute like a, each values of column A multiplied by column B. But what it does is it tries to write just the instruction only. Then after time, if you want to collect it only, then it will have to use different machines, execute in parallel, and then give you result uh, that is actively computed. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, so for the scheduler, yeah. Yeah, any other question? Yeah, it is. Um, could you possibly touch on what an integration of uh, Spark and uh, F that looks like? Like, at what point do you now call F yeah. to do the scheduling? Okay, so Spark and Airflow. Airflow. Yeah. Um, yeah, I I don't have resource right now, but I could I could just uh, take a look and share it with Anastasia. Sure. So, uh, yeah, I think I am done from my side. So, back to you, Desmond. Okay, thank you so much, Rahel, for um, that uh, wonderful, wonderful tutorial that you've taken us through. Uh, I'm pretty sure that um, all of us have learned about Spark and um, that we are now able to use Spark in um, uh, our ETL in the project for, for this week. So if we do not have any further questions, maybe we are going to call, um, um, we're going to come to the end of the class today. So maybe, do you have anyone with a question? Okay, looks like we don't have anyone with a question. So maybe I think we will stop at that and um, then we will continue with um, the chat in Slack. So if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out on Slack. So thanks everyone. Um, <clears throat> have a wonderful evening and nice coding. Yeah, thanks everyone. Bye. Bye.